Shalom, shalom. Michelle Gold here, and I want to talk to you about my dream. I have a dream that one day all the congregations and the churches are going to go back to the altar. That's right. We're going to make a comeback. I'm going to try something today I've never done before. I'm going to kind of read while I'm teaching here um, because the Lord has put this on my heart, you see, and I can't hold it back. So Yeshua said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He knew when to talk and when to teach. Each, and he certainly also spent time praying inside and outside the temple for the sick, the blind, and those in need. So you might say, um, you know, why can't we all just learn and go home? What does Yeshua think? Why can't we just, you know, get a great teaching and then not stop and listen for God's direction and healing and all that good stuff? You know, why can't we just, you know, just go and learn and get out? Um, I admit that I love learning. I come from a family of teachers, and I love to go on YouTube and listen to teachers and preachers. Sometimes I even listen to non-experts um, because I want to hear their strength and their experience. So God doesn't frown upon talking. I mean, the Bible even says that a good word is like a fountain of life. I want to be a fountain of life. That's cool. Um, so this video that I'm making, this blog that I wrote, is actually just to lift up pastors and rabbis and leaders because I want to see us as a nation rise up and get empowered. So this is what the Lord put on my heart. Uh, let's see if I can read this. It keeps pausing on me. Okay, so I just want to tell you that my husband and I have had the honor of traveling to over 400 churches and congregations around the United States, Israel, as well as in Europe, and surprise, surprise, uh, the place where people receive healing and prayer, the altar, the altars are closed. I often think people are needlessly suffering in silence and struggling, and God, fill me with strength right now. Make me a vessel. And then I think I'll go up and pray. And guess what? The leader dismisses the service and my heart breaks. So if the believers don't use our God-given power to bless and pray for healing, the world offers pretty good teaching too. And I'm afraid they do believe in their own power to heal. And you can be mad at their misguided view. Of course, they're not going to heal anybody. But let's learn from their zeal. The power to heal does not come by human might or power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And we cannot hold back this beautiful gift because we feel weak. Now, come on, the Bible says that when we are weak, we are really strong. So if we don't go forward and pray for those in need, or if we don't go and pray for ourselves, then who will go and bring comfort to those crying out? If we don't take a few moments in God's presence, how will we be renewed, healed, and strengthened in our mind, body, and soul with nothing to give at all? Shall we spin around like busy bees bzzz, and just be human doings? Is that what we're supposed to be? Absolutely not. It's time to rise up and bring people back to the altar. What could be a more urgent reason, reason for gathering every week than to pray? There is nothing more important than listening for God's direction and meditating in him who among us doesn't need liberation from fear, heartache, disenchantment with the world, obsessions, and the list goes on. Yes, doctors can heal. We pray for our doctors. Doctors, uh, God gives them power and strength. But you know what? The real power comes from Dr. Father God, and we need him. There are some ailments that he will use a counselor or a therapist to heal, and there are some ailments that the Lord needs to heal. So we need to be in his presence, and I think even a good therapist will tell you that there is nothing compared to his presence. So even Moses knew it. He said, Lord, if your presence does not go up, if your presence does not go with us, don't let us go up from here. It's like the Brooklyn thing, you know, here's my Brooklyn version. Yo, God, if your presence don't go with me, let me not go from here, all right? Exodus 33, 12 through 15. So why are the altars on lock mode? What are the reasons for the waters of healing to be roped off for those who want to dive in? What is going on? Well, below are some reasons here. I'm going to read some myths that pastors are giving, leaders are giving, 
And mind you, I love all the pastors and leaders in my life. I respect them. They make a major sacrifice every Saturday, every Sunday, coming to bless you, to care for you, to listen to your Mishigas, to give you strength. And my Mishigas, thank God for them. But could they be forgetting the one thing that we need to go back to? So here's a myth we hear a lot. The Word of God says we're a temple of the Holy Spirit, so we're all just going to pray at home or pray in our cars on the way to church. Eh. Joe, Minister Joe, my husband, he negates this saying, um, you know, in all of his years of training, he's been a youth pastor for over 20 years and a trainer at Chase Manhattan Bank working with people continuously. And in all of his training, he says that if you believe that you can just pray at home, this negates our need for the Spirit of God to cleanse us from unrighteousness because during a message, people often hear what they need to change to be conformed to the image of God. So prayer at the end of the message helps a person repent and receive healing as a stronger believer. Two... We don't have time to pray after service. We got to get to the fellowship and eat food. Wrong. Da, 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 da. Uh, what's more important, prayer or pasta, Minister Joe says. If we need to rush to eat together, let's shorten the worship service, the announcements, or add altar time during the worship service. Why not? We knew two particular pastors. Um, one, uh, Pastor Ken in uh, Nashville, he used to play a beautiful, sweet song, and people could come forward and pray or pray at their seats together. And uh, another beautiful, beautiful uh, female pastor we know who uh, had pillows out on the altar, and you could come and just spend time with the Lord and hear his voice. So uh, the third myth we hear is, why don't we just pray once a month? It's easier just to do it in one day and just once in a while. But, you know, Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Minister Joe answers this myth by saying um, that the, the scriptures teach us to pray uh, always. And we do need to pray at the end of a message. It helps solidify the message in a believer's heart. Um, sure, we can say the Our Father. Um, that is a start, but nothing takes the place of personal, heartfelt prayer to God at the altar. And the Word of God commands us to lay hands on the sick, James 5.13. So in conclusion, my family, I beg you, let's make 2017 a year of renewal, healing, and power by let's go back to the altar. My story, I've been blessed. I have overcome the pain of being touched the wrong way as a young girl uh, in the world. The pain of finding out that fame and education just won't satisfy the way that I thought they would. I've been healed of major stomach ailments. God has restored my relationship with my family. Um, they have been nothing but good to me. And I have been a partaker in praying for others, seeing God's power. I'm talking too much, but I also want to tell you that I've been blessed in my marriage, going to the altar, just sitting quietly. How do you pray? Sometimes I kneel. Sometimes I sit crisscross applesauce. Sometimes I just cover my face with my hair or my hands so no one can see my intimate and reassuring private convo with God. Do you want to be a part of this revolution? Ooh, ooh. Yes, you want to be a part of the revolution. Ooh, ooh. So, number one. Offer to be the one. If you're a seasons believer, ask your pastor if you can be a prayer worker. It's important for the congregations to have a designated person that everyone feels safe with. Make sure to abide by the rules of your leader. Two, why not be the first? Don't be afraid to be the first one to kneel and sit before God at the altar. Ask your leader, what is the acceptable time after service to worship at the altar? The Lord will reward you for spending time with him or pray at your seat if you can quiet your soul and avoid distraction. I like to do that as well. Three, believe again that there is power. There is power, power, wonder-working power. Um, there's power in prayer. So let's just get down to it. I look forward to hearing your praise reports as you challenge yourself to urgently awaken that part of your spirit which longs to be in his presence, in the presence of Adonai. As we enter into the holidays, let us remember the greatest present is Adonai's presence. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace. Shalom, shalom, everyone. And if you want 
I am offering my new book, Finding Gold, as well as my CD for a big discount um, until, I think, till the end of the holidays. So check it out, michellegold.com slash music or michellegold.com slash finding gold. If you get the CD, I'm going to give you a free download of the book. And if you get the book, I'm going to give you a free download of the music. Shalom. It's all for you. God bless.